tahu. There is a stable conspiracy belief that the Illuminati rule the world. Conspiracy theorists associate many conspiracy theories with the secret societies of the Illuminati, considering as their motivation the thirst for world domination, total control over human, scientific and financial resources. The further away, the ideas become crazier and crazier. Some believe that the Illuminati are subordinate to entities from the immaterial dimension of the cosmos, who control a huge number of civilizations in the universe, playing their games with each other through the material dimension itself. Someone believes that even these entities are in an endless corridor of bondage of higher entities. For example, the modern conspiracy picture looks something like this. The Illuminati, as terrible servants of the devil, drinking the blood of children at the dinner table, make decisions dictated to them by aliens who are captive to other aliens who in turn are manipulated by cosmic civilizations enslaved by artificial intelligence from another dimension of the universe, which is controlled by another artificial intelligence, subordinate to the will of immaterial entities fighting with each other for power in their dimension. Those who are religious add that these entities are fighting with each other because some are controlled by the will of the devil, and others are controlled by one or another god. Someone even adds multiverses to explain that the battle takes place at once in all parallel worlds at all levels, and that the universes themselves were made by these invisible entities to feed on energy, using them by and large, as robots use people in the Matrix movie. This nonsense can be continued indefinitely. The point of this video is to make it clear that the world has never been ruled and will not be ruled by any Illuminati, because Illumination has nothing to do with the human desire to control other people. Of course, there are certain elite orders in the world whose interests compete with each other. And if you are already developing some conspiracy theory, then you should use the correct terminology, because calling someone Illuminati without understanding what illumination itself means in nature is like calling the Earth the Sun and assuming that the Earth is not a planet, but a star. So, to begin with, let's take a closer look at the origin of the word Illuminati from the German Illuminate Norden and from the Latin Illuminati also enlightened from lat. Illuminatus, illuminated, enlightened, enlightened. Let me remind you that it follows from the theories of conspiracy theorists that the main motivation of the Illuminati is the thirst for world domination, total control over human, scientific and financial resources. Don't you find a direct contradiction here? This sounds as stupid as, for example, postmodernism. It is well known that the philosophy of postmodernism spoke about the death of the author, about the destruction of authorities and about the contextuality of truth. That is, truth is not universal and depends on certain circumstances. This relativism, in which there are no facts, but only points of view and interpretations, gave rise to modern culture. If postmodernism declares that there is no objective truth that is uniform for all, then this statement itself cannot be an objective uniform truth. Just as postmodernism begins to stumble over itself, so the Illuminati limp along with the Illumination. How can the Enlightened One, from Lat. Illuminatus, Enlightened, a person to have a thirst for world domination? No way. Kant believed that Enlightenment requires only freedom, and such freedom that in any case one can publicly use one's own mind. A person who wants to drink the blood of children and rule the world has no compassion, and therefore such a person is not enlightened, and therefore he cannot be considered an Illuminati. Enlightenment does not exist outside of compassion. Because there is no enlightenment outside of compassion, the only way of spiritual development lies in the depth and breadth of the ability to sympathize with living beings. Compassion is the condition of every evolution of the mind. Any other path that excludes compassion or does not give it priority does not apply to illumination. Each of us can practice outwardly and be interested in anything, but if our hearts are dead inside, then we have not even begun to walk on the spiritual path of awakening. If someone believes that he was once very sensitive, and then lost this ability to natural empathy, then he is greatly mistaken about the fact that he originally went somewhere on his spiritual path at all. True compassion, like a real, pure, sincere heart, cannot be turned off or turned on at will. That's not how it works. Compassion is a living stream that never runs out. It controls you, and you don't control it, because there is no separate you in compassion and there never was. 
In fact, true compassion makes little difference between oneself and others. We naturally feel that we are a part of others, and they are a part of us. We can feel their suffering 100%, or at least we really know what it's like, and therefore we can take on all or most of their burden. This is the potential that we need to develop. This means that we practically do not feel the gap between ourselves and others. There is no separation between ourselves and the other, because the feeling of dual separation has disappeared. Galva Karmapa Therefore, when I hear that a person considers himself an initiate or is considered enlightened, because he eats healthy food, prays daily, meditates, knows how to sit for hours in the lotus position, knows everything by heart from astrology to cosmoenergetics, has read all religious, philosophical and mystical books, manages all his dreams, is outwardly pure and abstemious, but at the same time is indifferent to the misfortunes of other living beings that go beyond his focus of selfish empathy. A person for me, of course, is not an Illuminati, but simply a good or not very good, depending on how you look at it, a cosplayer or a spiritual faker. So who are the Illuminati? It's pretty simple. Illumination happens to us when we are compassionate. Because in those moments when our souls are naked, we are enlightened. The one who has established his consciousness in compassion is truly an Illuminati. You cannot know all the occult books by heart, not be initiated into the secret lines of knowledge transmission, not understand what Kabbalah is at all, never meditate in your life, but at the same time throw yourself into the river for a drowning child, risking the cost of your own life and saving him to become an Illuminati in the true sense of the word. Teachers in schools who could not understand anything either in esotericism or in spiritual systems as such, protecting their children from bullets with their bodies, were really enlightened. History knows many such examples. Your story reminded me of a friend. In the same days when I escaped from Tibet, he was sent to a Chinese labor camp. Before escaping from the Norbulinka Palace Asterisk I decided to visit the chapel and pay my respects, assuming that I was going there for the last time. There I met a friend who was already a senior monk of the Namgul Monastery at that time. Lopan La, as the monks affectionately called him, did not know that it was me. My visit was kept in the strictest secret, and it was impossible to open up even to him. As soon as I left the palace, the Chinese attacked. They arrested a lot of people and sent 130 people to a very remote area, as Stalin once exiled to Siberia. After 18 years of hard labor, Lopanla was able to escape to India. That's how I found out what happened in the labor camp. Lopanla said that the prisoners had no shoes and went barefoot even on the coldest days. Sometimes it was so cold that the spit turned into ice before it reached the ground. The prisoners were always hungry. Once Lopanla experienced such a brutal hunger that he tried to gnaw the body of a dead comrade. But the flesh was frozen and he could not bite it off. All this time, the prisoners were tortured. These were Soviet-style tortures, Japanese and Chinese. In this camp, they were united, creating a particularly cruel torture system. By the time my friend was released, only 20 out of 130 people were left alive. He said that he had been in real danger for all these 18 years. Naturally, I thought that it was about the danger to his life. But he replied that he was afraid of losing sympathy for his Chinese captors. Everyone in the room held their breath. This was incredible. This man considered the loss of empathy to be the greatest danger to himself. The loss of their cordiality and humanity. My friend is still alive, now he is 97 years old, and his mind is still clear, sharp and healthy. As you said, spiritual experiences and experiences have only strengthened his capacity for compassion and the best human qualities. The Dalai Lama 14, a dialogue with Archbishop Desmond Tutu about the power of genuine compassion. 2015, the material is taken from the book, The Book of Joy. How to be happy in a changing world, by Douglas Abrams. Cosmic illumination is a way out of the subject-object dualism, which is the highest delusion on the way to understanding the true nature of the reality of the universe. Overcoming this subject-object dualism should become the main priority of transformation in the interests of humanity. Compassion is the highest form of love, and here we are not talking about some egoistic feeling for one person or animal but about a genuine all-encompassing love that gradually and consistently expands from a smaller circle to a larger one, from family and friends to the population of a city and an entire country, from the population of an entire country to all living beings on the planet, from all living beings on the planet to the cosmos as a whole. 
Love is a state of true unity with the universe. 